Well, good morning. It's good to see you all in the building this morning, up on the balcony and down here below. And it's good to have you join us online. It's a special morning for us this morning. It's the first chance in a long, long time that we get to share the Lord's Supper together. So I'm really pleased you guys have been able to to come and join us. Let me encourage you if you're at home, particularly if you've had the vaccine, come and join us. Come back and be with us. When we can meet, we should meet. And it's good to be here this morning together. Uh, There are uh, lovely verses in Psalm 9 which are a a call to worship. Uh, Let me read those to you. Psalm 9 verse 1, I will give thanks to you, Lord, with all my heart. There's the sincerity that's required in our worship. I will tell of all your wonderful deeds. There's the content of our worship this morning. I will be glad and rejoice in you. I will sing the praises of your name, O Most High. They're the affections that accompany our worship. We come with gladness, with rejoicing, with singing in our hearts this morning. As we begin, let me uh, open in prayer and let's hand this time over to the Lord our God. Our Father in heaven, O Most High, We thank you that we are gathered this morning in the name of your Son, our Saviour, the Lord Jesus Christ, as we uh, tell one another of his wonderful deeds, as we encourage our hearts and sing out our praise. May all these things be pleasing in your sight, for we ask in the name of your Son, our Saviour, the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. We will sing in a moment, but a couple of quick things before we do. Let me just remind you of the the kind of the little fiddly bit for later. I figured if we talk about this now, then we won't have to deal with the practicalities later and our thoughts can be on higher things. But your uh, bread and wine come in a little sealed package for the safety and health of all involved. Uh, Just remember, it comes with two lids. The first lid reveals the bread, the wafer, uh, so we take, and then the second lid is the one that you to get to the to the wine underneath, the grape juice. Okay, two lids, a little bit fizzly. We'll take our time till we get used to these things. Uh, the other thing that's important to say is this is a, a special day, not just because we can share communion together for the first time in a long time, but well, Aileen's got a very special birthday today. In normal circumstances, we would sing to you, Aileen. But since we can't, we'll just say happy birthday. <laughs> Nat Day's birthday. <laughs> well, we will sing to that. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> happy birthday, Nat and Amy. How wonderful. I didn't know you guys shared a birthday. Uh, much of the first part of our service is going to be focused around the Lord's Supper. Later, our assistant minister, Matt, will come and uh, preach God's word to us from Galatians 5. But before he does so, we want to think of... Well, of this wonderful salvation of which we uh, think and speak and sing, the salvation that was won for us at the cross of the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, Part of that, we're going to stand and we're going to have a song. If you're here, please hum behind your masks at home or you have more liberty than we do. You can sing loud and proud. But let's stand and we, uh, we sing the first song for this morning. Oh, great God of highest heaven.
Please do have a seat. It has been a long time since we've been able to share the Lord's Supper, and you know, don't you, that it is a meal rich in meaning. And the bread and wine speak to us of the body and the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, of his death and resurrection and the new covenant in his name. They speak to us of salvation. And the act of sharing together, physically gathered in one place as one people, is important to welcome. We are one, brothers and sisters, together in the Lord Jesus Christ. We are together sinners in need of mercy and grace. We are together grateful recipients of Christ. Sharing together reminds us that God in his wisdom brought us together as a local church, that we uh, are to encourage one another on in the gospel. We, we spur one another on in love and good deeds. Perhaps God took this away from us for a time because we'd taken for granted how important it was to come together, how special it was to gather in the name of the Lord Jesus and worship as a church family. Perhaps he took this away from us for a time so that the richness of the gospel and the sweetness of our fellowship might be restored to us. Whatever lessons that we've had to learn, uh, we come this morning with thankful hearts, uh, thankful that we can uh, gather again around the Lord's table and enjoy these simple elements as Christ himself directed us. We come mourning our sin, but we come to celebrating our Savior. We come rejoicing in our salvation. If you've got a Bible, you might want to follow, but I want to read, if you don't, that's fine. I want to read to you words from Psalm 32. They're going to help us as we confess our sin before our God. Let me uh, read them, and then we'll have a time of silence just for private prayer and reflection. Let me encourage you folks at home as well, particularly perhaps if you're not a Christian and you're observing this maybe for the first time. Why not pause, reflect on the words, and consider them for yourselves? I'll read words from Psalm 32. We'll have a time of quiet, and then I'll lead us in prayer. Psalm 32, starting at verse 1. Blessed is the one whose transgressions are forgiven, whose sins are covered. Blessed is the one whose sin the Lord does not count against them, and in whose spirit there is no deceit. When I kept silent, my bones wasted away uh, through my groaning all day long. For day and night, your hand was heavy on me. My strength was sapped as in the heat of summer. Then I acknowledged my sin to you and did not cover up my iniquity. I said, I will confess my transgressions to the Lord and hear this, and you forgave the guilt of my sin. Let's have a moment of quiet reflection and prayer. And Father, as we gather this morning in the name of your Son, it's right that we acknowledge our failings to you. We're conscious this morning that we have not loved you as we should in heart and soul and strength, that we have not loved others as you command us. As we search our hearts, we find idolatry there, the love of created things. As we search our hearts, we find selfishness there, 
the love of ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, in word, in deed, in what we have done and in what we have failed to do. This morning, forgive us our sin, we pray. And let the words of the psalmist be true of us. Blessed is the one whose transgressions are forgiven, whose sins are covered. Blessed is the one whose sin the Lord does not count against them and in whose spirit there is no deceit. Our Father, as we share this bread and wine, teach us again the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Remind us that he was broken, that we might go free, that his blood was poured out, that he knew death so that we might have life that he was separated from you at the cross, that we might be reconciled now and always. Our Father, we thank you for this simple meal and pray that as we share, you would bless us together as one in Christ, for we ask in his name. Amen. Amen. Well, if you've put your... Uh, I'm not sure what to call it really, that thing down, now's the chance to find it. <clears throat> the Lord Jesus on the night he was betrayed took bread and when he had given thanks he broke it and he said this is my body which is for you, do this in remembrance of me. If you trust in the Lord Jesus Christ for your salvation, then we encourage you, whether you, this is your first time with us or your thousandth time with us, join with us as we share the Lord's Supper. And so now we come to eat the bread. In the same way, after supper, Jesus took the cup, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you, um, uh, do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. And so we drink together. Further on in Psalm 32, we find these words, verse 6. Therefore, let all the faithful pray to you while you may be found. Surely the rising of the mighty waters will not reach them. You are my hiding place. You will protect me from trouble and surround me with songs of deliverance. Many are the foes of the wicked, but the Lord's unfailing love surrounds those who trust in him. Rejoice in the Lord and be glad, you righteous. Sing all you who are upright in heart. Let's bow our heads and pray again. Father, as we share the Lord's Supper again, it is with thankful hearts, thankful that you have provided a place for us to meet, thankful that you have worked such generosity into the hearts of the brothers and sisters here at Mill Road Baptist Church. We're thankful that vaccinations have been so quickly and so widely made available. Thankful that we are free to meet as we do this morning. But chiefly, we are thankful for Christ, our Lord and our Savior. He is our hiding place. In him, we are protected from the trouble of your wrath and are surrounded with songs of deliverance. In him, we know your unfailing love and so we rejoice in the Lord this day and all days. Encourage our hearts and let us not only be blessed, but through this day be a blessing to others. For we ask in Jesus' name, 
Amen. Amen. I'm glad that Zach enjoyed that prayer. Good boy. A hearty amen. We're almost becoming Pentecostal, but not quite. It's good when we share the Lord's Supper to pray, not just for ourselves, but to think of a uh, the worldwide brotherhood of believers. We're part of a, we're a small part of a huge global family of Christians. Uh, you've been following in the news, I'm sure, this week, some of the awful things that have been going on in Israel and the Gaza Strip as rockets go to and fro and great devastation ensues. We've been in touch with a, a church based in Israel, a church that reaches out to, to people from all different backgrounds, uh, Arabs, Jews, and other ethnic uh, groupings of folks who live in that area. Uh, we, we've been able to talk with them and they've shared some of what's going on. And uh, in particular, they've, they've given us some ideas of things that we could pray for them and for other believers in that area at this time. Nicola's gonna come and is gonna lead us in prayer. To forgive my mascot she's a bit overwhelmed let's pray dear lord god and heavenly father thank you that the earth is yours and everything in it you are the king of glory who made this world and nothing that happens in it is outside your power or will sovereign lord we bring to you the situation in Israel and Gaza and pray that, you, pray that you would protect all people and in particular civilians in the region. We pray that the spiraling loss of life would cease and that you would divinely keep people in that area from harm. Thank you that you care intimately for your creation, so much so that you humbled yourself to walk among us, even to die on a cross. You experienced pain and suffering and yet overcame the power of death itself. Thank you that you can sympathize with those experiencing fear, loss and suffering and offer real hope for the present and the future. Please comfort and draw near to those who are grieving the loss of loved ones in this conflict. Would they seek you and find rest in the God of all comfort? Lord, we thank you for the hope that we have as believers, um, that we as believers have in Jesus. And we pray for our brothers and sisters in Israel and Gaza who share in this hope. Please strengthen their faith. Please help them to hold firm to you, to be brave and resist the temptations to fear or hate. Would they be assured of their salvation and experience your peace as they walk in obedience to you. We pray that CJM Israel and the rest of the body of Christ in that region would be one in purpose to serve and glorify their King. Please enable them to live out the gospel, to comfort, to be peacemakers, to practically support and to share their hope in Jesus. Would they bring much glory to your name and would the communities around them turn to you for refuge and for salvation, we pray. We do ask for a swift and divine solution to the developing hostilities in that region. Please bring peace to the streets and an, escalate, and an end to escalating exchanges of firepower. Thank you that all things are possible for you. And we pray that you would provide a clear path for lasting peace. We pray that those in positions of political and military leadership in Israel would be divinely led by you, Lord, and would be wise and thoughtful in their actions. We ask that all leaders who promote violence and hatred would be removed from positions of influence. Please raise up leaders in Gaza who value and protect life and will hold the welfare of their citizens in paramount priority. Would they fear you and treasure fellow image bearers of the Most High God? Your will be done. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, we come now to the sermon. 
if in prayer we speak to God through his word, God speaks to us. And the sermon is a very important part of our service together. Uh, we are in the book of Galatians. If you've got a Bible with you, you might want to turn to Galatians chapter 5. And Scylla is going to come and read God's word to us. Matt, you have to come up. <clears throat> if you want to. So we're reading from Galatians chapter 5, 19 to 26. The acts of the flesh are obvious. Sexual immorality, impurity and debauchery, idolatry and witchcraft, hatred, discord, jealousy, fits of rage, selfish ambition, dissensions, factions and envy, drunkenness, orgies and the like. I warn you, as I did before, that those who live like this will not inherit the kingdom of God. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness and self-control. Against such things there is no law. Those who belong to Jesus Christ have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. Now, since we live by the Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit. Let us not become conceited, provoking and envying each other. Thank you, Silla, for reading. Good morning. It's really, really good to be here, isn't it? And uh, it's good to see you online. Um, hope it's good for you online as well to be a part of us, our service together. I'm going to pray, and we're going to look at this passage in Galatians together. Father God, we're so gracious for your goodness to us. Thank you that you speak to us. Thank you that you do indeed bring change. And we pray for that change through your words and through the power of your spirit this morning. And we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. So this morning I want to think about where is the world that we long for? Where is it? Where is this world that we long for? We've seen a photo even just now um, of people saying pray for peace in Israel and Gaza. Where is that world that we long for? that's filled with joy and love. Gandhi, he's always good for a quote, isn't he? Apparently Gandhi said, if you want to change the world, start with yourself. If you want to change the world, start with yourself. Well, that sounds quite good, doesn't it? But have you ever tried to change yourself? Have you ever tried to change yourself? It's really, it's really hard, isn't it? If you try to change, I find it hard to change. We do the same things over and over again. Oh, there I am again, snapping at the children. There I am again, impatient with someone at work. There I am again, grumbling at God because I haven't got something. And I can't seem to change. But we all want it, don't we? We all want it and we all want the same thing. Last week in, in Cambridge, we elected a new mayor, didn't we? And uh, the guy who's been elected, I, I was... Quite surprised, pleasantly surprised to see that in his, in his manifesto, he said he is about the three C's. That's a good sermon outline, isn't it? Compassion, cooperation, community. Compassion. I was pleased to see that. What a wonderful thing. That's what he wants to bring, compassion. But actually, I mean, if you'd have held the other candidates, you know, at gunpoint and said, are you about compassion? I'm sure they would have said yes. I'm sure this guy probably got, got there first in kind of claiming that word. But even if it's just lip service, even if there's no ideas of how to bring it about, everyone is really going to nod, aren't they, and say, yes, of course, compassion. That would be an amazing thing. In fact, we all want those things that we read, didn't we, from, from verse 22. Love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness. That's what we want. We're all agreed, aren't we? So where are they? 
Where are they? It doesn't work, does it? Just being free to do what we want doesn't seem to bring that about. In fact, if we want to talk about doing what we want, well, what we end up with is, is the list really in verse 19. The acts of the flesh, they're obvious. Sexual immorality, impurity, debauchery, idolatry, witchcraft, hated, hatred, discourse, fits of rage, selfish ambition. That's what doing what you want brings. So how's it going to happen? So they're the acts of the flesh, but actually in Galatians, Paul's talked about another way of the flesh, which is, a, we've called it kind of DIY righteousness, do it yourself. Well, I'll crack on and I'll bring these things about. And that's what Paul is, has been telling the Galatians not to do. You started in faith and now you're thinking, well, if I just pull my socks up, and I'll be able to kind of manufacture this righteousness. And maybe uh, as a world, as a society, we think we don't even need God for that. The comedian Ricky Gervais has put it this way. He says, look, you're not going to go to hell, but be kind anyway. So we don't need God's rules. It's obvious. We just try and be kind anyway. But really, that doesn't work either. Because DIY righteousness, well, that doesn't work because it's hard to do. But it brings factions and dissension the kind of secular dogma doesn't bring any any unity at all when we're trying to kind of outright one another in fact only recently Richard Dawkins has had his um, award for humanist of the year removed from him taken away from him because he agrees with the biology that men can't be women and vice versa but that that won't wash with society so he's no longer humanist of the year J.K. Rowling got into similar trouble because she tweeted that people that give birth to children should be called women. Well, that won't wash with the kind of righteousness we're looking for in society. So she's been ostracized. And so it goes on and on. It just brings faction and dissent. So, so the do what you want, well, that doesn't work. And the DIY righteousness, that doesn't work either. Neither of them produces the life that we want. So how's it going to happen? How is it going to happen? Well, of course... As Christians, we're going to say it's the gospel. God's going to make it going to happen. So how, how is that going to be? Is it God's rules? Is that, is that what we're looking for? Well, this morning we're going to see that it's the life of the Spirit. God's Spirit, the third person of the Trinity, the Holy Spirit, who's going to bring it about. And we're going to see three things simply. That the Spirit brings freedom for a godly life. That's what he does. And the Spirit brings the fruit of the godly life. So follow his lead. Spirit brings freedom for a godly life. He brings the fruit of the godly life. So follow his lead. If you've been with us in Galatians, you'd have known that Paul has spent four chapters saying that you do not get right with God by doing stuff. You can't earn your way to God. Righteousness is by faith alone. He spent four chapters doing that. So we may well think, well, okay, Paul, if I'm free, this is all about freedom. We've called our series Freedom Through Sonship. If it's all about freedom, I can do what I like, can't I? I can do what I want because God forgives, so I just live the way I want. But we've seen that actually we don't. Verse 13, if you have a Bible open further up the page, we saw this last week. Do not use your freedom to indulge in the flesh. So you're not free to do what you want. But rather serve one another humbly in love. If you bite and devour each other, watch out or you'll be destroyed. Because that's what will happen if you try to DIY righteousness. It'll end up in biting and devouring and factions. But we're to love one another. Love your neighbor as yourself. In this, you fulfill the whole law, Paul says. So hang on a minute. So hang on a minute. We're, we're free, but we're not free to do what we want. And then Paul's saying, well, if you're free to serve, and as you do that, you'll fulfill the law. So we do keep the law after all. It's confusing, Paul. What's going on? Um, he's saying we keep the law after all, isn't he? And that, that sort of would make sense because freedom doesn't work. Well, no, Paul's not saying that. He's not saying DIY righteousness, and he's not saying do it yourself because life in the spirit is different. Those things are fleshly. They're of the self, aren't they? We've just seen the acts of the flesh in verse 19 that we'll come to. That's what he's read about. Flesh is about us. That's our humanly self and our desires. D 
DIY, do-it-yourself righteousness, self-righteousness, or do what you want, what you want. But the Spirit is not us. He's God, and he is opposed to the flesh. But not only that, he's opposed to the law as well. I wonder if you spotted this last week when we looked at it. Um, so in verse 17, um, the spirit in the f- is contrary to the flesh. They're, at, they're in conflict with one another. So verse, the, verse 18, if you are led by the spirit, you are not, what, under the flesh? No. You're not under the law. So the spirit is opposed to the flesh, but opposed to the law as well. Well, why is that? Well, we've seen in Galatians, it's because the flesh and the law are to do with a different time. He's talking about a time period, the old way. Paul calls this in in, in chapter one, the present evil age. And we saw in chapter one that we're to think that we've moved now in freedom to a new age. We thought about We thought about the idea of currency. You know, when you bring a a new £20 note in, that's going to be the currency. And shortly afterwards, the old notes, you can't use them. They'll be dead. But there is a time of overlap. And it's like that now that Jesus has come. We live in the time of the spirit of freedom, of the new £20 note. But the old stuff, that's still there. But that's old. That's passing away. This This world is passing away. When Jesus comes back, it will all be about the time of the spirit so so he's talking about we live by the spirit because that's the time we're in we're free to live the godly life that's what we're free for and there's two sorts of people therefore so in verse 21 that we had read out i warn you as i did before that those that live like this all the acts of the flesh will not inherit the kingdom of god So there are people that will not inherit the kingdom of God. And then, verse 25, there are those, since we live by the Spirit, those that are alive by the Spirit have been freed. Let us keep in step with the Spirit. So there are those that belong to Christ. We have been freed to belong to Christ. And verse 24, we have crucified the flesh. And so we're not free to go back to the old time. I tried to look recently at, at statistics for, um, for re-offending in the country, and it seems to sort of uh, shift a little bit over the years, 28%, 30%, but it's roughly 30%. About a third of people that come out of prison re-offend. Now, the reasons for that are complicated, and there's lots of them. We don't have time to go into them, but I can tell you one thing for sure, that all of those prisoners were not released from prison in order to go back and reoffend. That's not why they were released. And the same's true for those trusting Jesus today. You have been free by the Spirit to bring freedom for a godly life. So what does that look like? Well, secondly, the Spirit brings freedom for a godly life. He brings the fruit of a godly life. Now, trying to live that way, as Mike showed us uh, a couple of weeks ago, is a battle. It's really good to, to be honest about that, that it's a battle. It doesn't just happen. So we have changed desires, but there are old desires as well. And the old desires are the acts of the flesh. Verse 19, the acts of the flesh are obvious. Sexual immorality, impurity, debauchery, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, discord, jealousy, fits of rage, selfish ambition, dissensions, factions, envy, drunkenness, orgies, and the like, and similar stuff. Now, who reading that list has not fallen foul of one of those things even this morning, let alone in the last week? And so, so we're to put them aside. Paul's saying that those that continue in that will not inherit the kingdom of God. That is not the fruit of the godly life, of those that are trusting Jesus. And did you notice that they're all self-fixated, aren't they? They're all self. Sexual immorality, what can I get? Impurity, what do I want to think about? What pleases me? Idolatry, I will choose what to serve, what to make God. Witchcraft, I want to be in control of stuff. Hatred, because the stuff is about me and not other people. Discord, because it's about me. Jealousy, what do I want? Can you see they're all self-fixated, aren't they? They're anti-community, they're anti-family, they're anti-kingdom. And we are free, not, we're not free for that. We've not been freed to entertain that. 
but we've been freed for the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, forbearance, kindness, goodness, all of those things. But they're radical things. They're the God version of things. Not a kind of like hippie love and wishy-washy, radical love. What's God's love like? Sacrificial. That God so loved the world that he sent his own son to die. That there is joy, not just happiness, but deep joy, a, a posture of knowing that joy in the Lord, regardless of whatever else happens around us. Peace not just relaxing and, and, and calm and quiet with a book in the corner, but peace between us and God. And then peace, deep peace with one another. So just look, look down closely at that list. It's an amazing list. Wouldn't you love some of that? What is, what is God's will for you this week? Sometimes we, we want to think about what is God's will for me? What, what job does he want me to have? Who does he want me to be with? What should I do with my life? What should I do with my money? What, how should I talk to this person? Well, we're pretty free to do that and to trust God. But I'll tell you for one thing, God's will for you is this, that you would grow in love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Isn't that amazing? It's being made like Christ. It's what Paul said the other week when he said, I want Christ to be formed in you. This is what he means. This is how it happens. Now imagine, look at that. We need this list, don't we? We don't just nod along to it with, with, with everyone else that says, yeah, I'm, I'm about love and saving the world. No, we, we really need this, don't we? Personally. Imagine how your life would be different. And they're listed here for us like this as evidence of the godly life. The person with the Spirit trusting in the Lord Jesus will produce this. It will happen. Who are God's people? They're identified by this list. Notice what is not on the list. The fruit of the Spirit is not competent, competent, competence, confidence, doctrinal understanding, problem solving, making a difference in the world. It's not on the list. Because what's on the list here is character forming, isn't it? This is not so much about what you do as who you are. That is the Holy Spirit's job, to bring that fruit around so that peace and kindness become a natural way. They, they, they just, that's what we end up doing. That's our instinct. And they are for serving. They're other people focused. Back in Galatians 3.11, we're told the righteous will live by faith. And then in chapter 5, faith is worked out in love. But that's not abstract. So if we live by faith and faith is worked out in love, it's like this, but it's not abstract. It's to love somebody. It's to be at peace with somebody. It's to be kind to somebody. So the Spirit brings the fruit of the godly life but we might also think of it like this, it's the Spirit that brings his fruit. His fruit, he's doing the work. So this is not a list for us to go and jot down, leave the building, pull our socks up, and try really hard this week to be loving and joyful. Because if you're just trying that on your own, I'll tell you now, you're going to fail. It's the Spirit that brings it is it about it's his character he is God and so this is nothing less than the heart of God in the life of his people Christ formed in us now some of us might try the DIY righteousness and it might look like fruit it might look like we're being joyful and loving but outside of God's power and his spirit doing it it's merely stapling fruit onto a tree isn't it if I staple apples onto a walnut tree it doesn't become an apple tree I'm just stapling it on. It's DIY righteousness. It might look like it, and it might even have some benefits. People, we, we might benefit from, from that kind of love and peace, but it's not this godly love and peace. But the Spirit, he brings that about, and because he brings it about, there is nothing, verse 23, against such things there is no law. 
it's his goodness and his fruit. So there's no law that's going to say, well, that's just self-righteousness love. You're just loving people, so God will be pleased with you. You're just trying to be joyful, so you'll get into heaven. That's your own works. No, there's no law against, against the Spirit's fruit. Isn't that amazing? It's a goodness that cannot be condemned. So the Spirit brings freedom for a godly life, and he brings the fruit of a godly life. He does it. So therefore, we follow his lead. Verse 25, since we live by the Spirit, Paul's saying, since we do, we do, because that's how we're alive as Christians, by the Spirit. If you trust Jesus Christ this morning, you have the Spirit. So since you have the Spirit, which we do, let us keep in step with the Spirit. Let us not become conceited, provoking, and envying each other. And I think there's two steps, really, for those who belong to Christ. Verse 24, we remember this, don't we? Those who belong to Christ have crucified the flesh. So the old way is gone. You don't need me to tell you that crucifixion is is gruesome. I mean, it's a pretty ultimate and efficient way of killing somebody. And that's what happened to Christ. And as we're united to him, our old way, that is there as well. Our old way, our old person that wants to live for ourselves, that has had a nail put through it. Because if we want to restrain sin, if we want to live the godly life, it's the cross, not the law. It's the cross, but not the law that will defeat flesh. You'll never defeat the passions and the desires of the flesh this week or any other week you just won't but it's the cross that defeats it with its passions and desires so that Paul says earlier in Galatians doesn't he that it's not me living but it's Christ in me I wonder if that's how you if that's how you consider yourself so we consider where we were and who we are the old person gone Verse 25, we have the Spirit. Isn't that amazing? God does not ask anything of you that he does not equip you for. He's not sending you off with a a list to make a better world and saying, well, good luck, and I'll come back and mark your grade at the end. No, he's saying you have the Spirit, and he will bear that fruit in your life when you let him lead and that leading is is active and it's formative let us keep in step with the spirit it's a bit like a kind of military step have you ever seen um troops marching and they're all marching identically in in unison like that this week i found a, a quote from someone who chronicled um that roman warfare and about the importance of marching And it said this, that there's nothing more of consequence in the march or in the line that they should keep their ranks with with greatest exactness. For troops who march in an irregular and disorderly manner are always in great danger of being defeated. So we stay in the step with the Spirit. What's he doing? How does he live? But it's also a kind of formative leading, isn't it? That he is doing the work. I was trying to think about how to illustrate this, but perhaps some of you watch Strictly. Some of you watch Strictly, and uh, you you have someone who knows nothing about dance, and then you have an expert, and uh, this illustration works better, really, when the expert is the the man who leads. That's what ballroom dancing is, how it's structured, isn't it? The man sort of leads the dance, as I understand it. And, uh, And so you have someone else who doesn't know what they're doing, and they are taught. And when they're taught, even in the dance... That there's, a, there's someone leading. Now, I'm not a dancing expert, but as I've watched a bit of it, it seems to me that the, the, the party that, that comes off looking great and flourishing is the woman. So there's leading, and there's the guy in a pretty, you know, ordinary suit. I mean, what, I don't know what he can... Sparkles maybe to jazz it up a bit, but the, the ladies seem to have the, the best clothes, is what I can see and maybe the best moves, but there's a a leading. Of course, it's not a perfect illustration, but can you see what I'm getting at? 
that we let the Spirit lead and he shows us and he works for us. And we flourish and produce his, that fruit because he is producing it in us. And so to keep in step with him, we're going to be thinking, what does he want? Where is he going, the Spirit? Well, the Spirit honours Christ. The Spirit's always pointing to Christ. The Spirit honours Christ, so we can look to Christ. And there we see what the godly life is all about, don't we? There we see that love that he would give his life. There we see that incredible self-control put upon by a mob of people in the middle of the night and at his fingertips, at the click of a finger, could summon millions of warrior angels to destroy them all and say, look, don't attack me. I am the son of God. But no, self-control. Patience. Kindness. How kind is Jesus? And the Spirit is pointing to him, honouring him. But for us, it's hard, isn't it? And it's especially hard in the moment, because in the moment, we don't think those, these things are desirable. Suddenly, that, all that goes out the window. Someone, suddenly, someone's annoyed us. Oh, patience, yeah, I know yesterday I thought patience is a good idea. Now I don't. Now getting my own way is a good idea. It's really hard, isn't it, in the moment. But keeping in step with the Spirit is to form us, and so that as our character, it becomes natural so we can respond and walk with him. Paul says in his letter to the Philippians, doesn't he, that we are to work out our salvation with fear and trembling. We're to work it out, but why? Because it's God who works powerfully in us. So I wonder this morning, have you, have you asked the Spirit to work? If you find it hard like I do, we can ask. Spirit, can you, can you help me keep in step with you? And he will produce it because this is fruit that's guaranteed. He will work. So as Christians then, do we keep the law? What restrains sin? Well, actually, it's our true freedom that will do it because God's law now becomes, if you like, it's a bit like an open question rather than a closed question. The closed question says, what must I do? What are the things it's like the guy that speaks to Jesus and Jesus says to him, love your neighbor. And he says, well, who is my neighbor? Which is basically another way for asking, who don't I have to love? Just give me the skinny on this. What, who am I loving? Okay, that's the sort of closed question. The open question is, who can I love? How could I love today? Imagine a, <clears throat> a favorite subject at school. Imagine it's engineering and you want to make stuff and be an engineer but there's a high bar, there's an exam to take before you can be an engineer, and it's really hard. And so you're thinking, oh, what do I have to do, and what do I have to make an engineer to get past this exam? That would be tough, wouldn't it? But imagine the person who set the exam comes and says, look, do you know what? Don't worry about that. I really want you to be an engineer. I'm going to come and take the exam for you, and I'm going to ace it 100%, no problem. You think, wow, that's good. And then you'll get a job in engineering. And do you know what? I tell you what, I'm going to come with you every single day and stand by you and make sure you make the right decisions and help you to be an engineer. That would be amazing, wouldn't it? All of a sudden, you're not thinking, oh, what do I have to do engineering to pass this exam? You're thinking, wow, what can I make? What can I do today? And the law becomes like that. We're free. How can I love? How can I be like Jesus today? And the Spirit is forming us to be such a person. Isn't that amazing? So he brings the freedom for the godly life. He brings the fruit of the godly life. So follow his lead. We can trust him to do that as he makes us more like Jesus. Everything we long for in the world is there in a person. And there's no hope for the world apart from the power of his Spirit, of the Spirit of his Son who he has sent into our lives. Why don't we pray together to finish and pray that the Spirit will be doing that work amongst us. Let's pray. Father God, thank you that you have not left us alone. Thank you that you have freed us. Thank you that the Spirit testifies um, within us that we belong to you and that we are free. 
and that we are sons and daughters of the Most High God, not through anything which we deserve, quite the opposite, but thank you for your grace in the Lord Jesus. And we pray, Holy Spirit, that you would be at work amongst us, bringing about your fruit in our lives that we find so hard to do ourselves, which we long for in our lives, and which we long for, for the kingdom of the Lord Jesus, that all would be made like him. So, Father God, please help us this week. Help us to be joyful, thankful, and trusting in your work in our life. Help us to put to death the acts and the desires of the flesh, and help us to enjoy and see the evidence of your work in our lives personally and in those around us and in our church family here today and we ask it in Jesus name amen right we're going to sing our final song together and um, through Galatians we've been uh, learning a song which helps us uh, I think to respond really well to some of the themes in Galatians it's perhaps the last time we'll get to sing it together um, in this series perhaps we'll pick it up again maybe when we're allowed to sing together in the building as well but um, we'll sing our final song together, um, humming here or singing loud at home. Let's sing. Led by the Spirit of Jesus Christ, we are the sons of God. us to the end of our service. Let me just flag up uh, a couple of things that are going on uh, this week. The first is to say that the, this afternoon we've got the second in our uh, little series on pastoral care. We began last week. Uh, if you weren't able to come, I hope you've been able to catch up with the recording of that. Handout for this afternoon will go out by email in advance. Uh, come and join in if you're, if you're free. As part of that, uh, it's not just me going on and on, but uh, Heather is going to join us next week and just share some of her experiences doing the biblical counselling course. Uh, so that'll be a break from the, the normal thing. That's this afternoon, four o'clock on Zoom. Join us if you can. Uh, the second thing to say is that on Wednesday night, uh, we've got a church prayer meeting. Do come and join us. Lots that we can be praying for. Let's give ourselves as a church family to prayer. Well, we close the service then as we say this uh, special prayer that comes from the scriptures as we often do. Let's close uh, as behind our masks or at home.
we say together these words. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Lord Christ, Jesus Christ and, the and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit. be with us all Amen. evermore. Amen. 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 Where's Brian or Ross? Which class?